Hey guys, me and team here bringing you another StarCraft 2 match. I'm going to be the red Protoss, my opponent the blue Zer uh, yeah, Zerg, that's great. And now uh, he'll be the blue Terran Spider-Man. So this is on Backwater Gulch, it's a map that I'm not too familiar with, although I've played it a few times since I basically came back into the game and broke off the rust. You got you know, a couple high yields in the middle with easy Zelnaga, watch of it. Uh, Probably people should probably play the Zelnaga Towers more on this map, actually. I didn't, but um, you get pretty good view there of oncoming attacks from anything but pure air. Anyway, um, th he, this guy was a random player, so I don't know that he's Terran right now. Uh, so I'm going to have to adapt based on my scouting. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, um, since I really don't know what I'm up against, I'm going to do a pretty standard 9 pylon 12 gateway opening. And, that, you know, that's just, it, against pretty much anything but 6-pull, it's pretty strong. And even with 6-pull, if you have great micro, you can still probably win. It's just a pen who has more micro in that case. It's not as good as walling off against 6-pull, but you can probably take it. And then if I get Zerg, I can always wall off here later with uh, my future buildings, like maybe a pylon, a cyber core, something like that, or just another gateway, just to prevent run-bys later. Because run-bys really aren't a problem until they get speed. That's when they really start causing problems with it. Anyway, he's going to do a wall off. I guess he doesn't want to get proxy two gated or something. I'm not sure how much people still do that. It's been pretty well walled in recent times, so I don't know what's up with that. But anyway, I'm going to scout the wrong direction, see nothing, and head up here next, and then finally over here. So I really don't know what I'm up against. Uh, building an additional pylon. I'm still chrono boosting probes. Might as well get some uh, early unit advantage here, because he's going to have mules at 15. Well, after he gets the orbital command at 15. But Protoss can use their chrono boosts to get probably more workers in the first couple minutes than any of the other races, even Zerg. Because Zerg needs to use larva. And so until they get their expansion up, they really can't outproduce Protoss in terms of that. In, at least if they want to live. So definitely need the expansion there. Pretty straightforward, I'm going to have a probe lead, at least for a while. What's the Terran doing here? Uh, not a whole lot yet, he hasn't committed to anything. I'm going basically Cybercore, Gateway. This is a uh, 4 gate build, so I'm going to build 4 gateways. Pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, one more gate I think should suffice before I start building additional pylons and whatever. I am getting my gas now too, just so I have some capability of building something other than zealots in case I need it. Uh, Terrans, especially in the early goings, uh, really tend to underestimate what zealots can do to them. You, know, you saw one of my earlier videos where I got kited to hell by marauders, which the zealots are supposedly countering. Let me see if I can show that actually. Yeah, they counter marauders. Well. That's true, but it isn't. If you get kited, it's true, but it, it's, it, it, you know, if you get kited, it's not true with the concussive shells. But any other time, um, zealots don't take uh, more than, they take like 9 damage from marauders, and marauders have slow attack speed. So if you're looking for sheer tanking units, then yes, absolutely. They will keep the marauders off of your stalkers pretty nicely, and that's a big help. SCV sneaks in here. I am building a stalker. I went pretty fast towards my stalkers this time, so nothing special there. He is expanding. I'm not sure I like this from a Terran this early on, but whatever. I'm a one base player, what can I say? Not really. I'll expand if I have to, but I, I really have a tendency to stay one base unless it's forced into a macro game. Like, if I scout that they're going really hard into defenses, then I'll go ahead and expand into a macro game too. But otherwise, I just like to punish people when they expand. It's really a delicate balance, and it relies a lot on scouting and on the player capabilities. Um, I had a match recently where I beat a Protoss with a 4-gate push when he expanded and had tons and tons of cannons just by out-microing him. <laughs> it's like pulling stalkers back, and <laughs> maybe I'll cast it. I, I screwed up at first and lost like two or three stalkers to the cannons, but then started just attacking so only one cannon could attack back at the same time and, you know, sn smacking his stalkers around. Not pro micro by any means, but certainly out microed my opponent. Yeah, it overran him despite him getting a second up. He was just never able to recover there. So, what am I doing here? I am getting a 
uh, detector here. What's this called? An observer. <laughs> Brilliant. Is I want to see what he's doing in his wall off. Uh, my probe came up here and got shot, so I knew it was Terran, but <laughs> his wall off is preventing any scouting. I don't want to get screwed by Banshee Harass. You'll see I'm even dropping a photon cannon here. I want extra defenses against that. I've lost to it too many times. So I just play safely until I get a little bit more skill on reading exactly when it's coming. Um, probing up here. I am going to see an expansion. He has not saturated it yet. Actually, if you look at the Harvester's count, we're even. So he hasn't really had this expansion pay off yet. It's going to start to as he calls down mules finally. But for the time being, I'm ahead on supply, um, even with this. So I'm a bit ahead on army. And seeing the expansion, I expect him to be spending at least some of his money on workers and non-additional units. So this is a timing window I want to hit. Uh, that also usually avoids stuff like factory attack and whatnot until later. So really want to make sure I uh, hit him hard right here if I'm going to stay on one base. Unfortunately, he does get the scan off. Did I get these already? No. So he's going to see me. But of course, I have an observer here. So I can see his exact composition as well. And right now I see Marine and Marauder. And what does that make me want to do? Zealots. Zealots are probably an underestimated early game unit in that they tank very, very well. I think people overbuild Stalkers against Terran and Zerg when there aren't a lot of roaches or... I'm not really sure what's so great about Stalkers against Terran unless you need to hit air. Or maybe you get blank and beat, beat tanks that way or something, but... Against Marines and Marauders... They're good for avoiding getting kited by the Marauders. They do bonus damage to Marauders, just as Marauders do bonus damage to them. But they're not particularly good against Marines or Marauders. They're just kind of, like, you need some in your army composition just so you can do some damage. You don't get kited forever. But they're not that great. So when I see a lot of Marine and Marauder play or expansion or I'm trying to push an expansion, it just makes more sense to go with more Zealots. And yeah, here I'm like, ah, I don't want to be detected by this crap, so I stay down here. I'm actually going to attack down this way. It's a little bit wider, so my zealots can do a little bit more. Just try to get the zealots in front, please. I do manage to do that. And alright, you look at the units here. I really caught him with his pants down. He basically SEV'd up while I built a lot of zealots. So 12 zealots, 6 stalkers, 3 sentries, and sentries can be pretty nice. Uh, with this few units, um, force field isn't as big a deal. The more marines and marauders there are, the bigger the ball clump, the more you want a force field to split their army in half. But when it's this small, um, I have a different use, and that's guardian shield. You take a lot less damage when you're in the guardian shield, so it's just a matter of micro to stay in it. Unfortunately, I'm not doing that so well here. I do supply lock him right now. And yeah, just keep that guardian shield up, keep the... Uh, <laughs> keep the zealots pumping because they're going to die. And yeah, I actually picked off a tank there because I caught him on his ramp. And that's his fault for expanding and getting caught on his ramp. And yeah, he's stimming, which is strong. But the Guardian Shield is reducing the damage from that. And it is the stim itself is also reducing his hit points. So I am slowly whittling down his forces here and playing yeah, just some back and forth games. For as many stims as he has, I have enough Guardian Shield to support that. And I'm going to break this uh, expansion pretty easily, actually. He's going to lift off, but he lifted off too late. <laughs> Way too late, and this thing's going to go down. So painful, painful. And I'm actually ahead of him on Harvesters again, only because I killed all his. But the supply locking is nice, too. And now I'm going to push up the ramp. I'm not sure what these zealots are doing. It would have been much better to lead with them, not taking bonus damage from the Marauders that way. And I, that does occur to me, so I pull down the ramp. Low APM! Low, low, low. Although, actually, I have quite a bit right now. <laughs> because the game is forcing me to do it. He pulls another tank. I'm not sure why he didn't siege it. Hang on. Why didn't he siege it? He doesn't have siege tech yet, because I hit him too soon. That's why he didn't siege his tank. Okay, makes sense. And he just doesn't have enough here. After I bust through the supply depots, he's going to pull some more ore workers off the line to try and fight me. Thought I killed that. A little bit of a missed micro for me there. And he's stuck fighting with his SCVs, which is never a good thing. And yeah, now he's got Marauders out, and that's screwing me up a bit. But uh, in comes some Zealots, and this is going to hurt. Because <laughs> these Zealots, he can kite them. He has concussive shells. But the problem is, now there's a lot more of them than he has units. So I'm just going to start splitting units. i got three here just to attack anything that produces. 
three more are heading towards the worker line, and these three are just going to chase his Marauder as I funnel in more units. Come on, come on, bring them up. But yeah, he doesn't really have a lot he can do now, because I'm camping his production structures and attacking his Econ, actually chasing a siege tank with Zealots. That's never a good thing for the tank. And he just can't do anything here. And he can run around all he wants, but he's losing workers, he's losing units. And I'm actually growing my army size relative to his. The supply variant is huge. And I slipped on my macro a bit during that fight, unfortunately. It's something I still need to work on. So yeah, that's just um, gateway tech play. Straight into their face. Four gateways instead of warp gates. It's probably the only novel thing about this approach. Is that I didn't use warp gates. And warp gate does have a long research time. 160 seconds. Even if you chrono boost that extensively. You can actually hit a slightly t earlier timing window with gateways. <sighs> it's so weird though. I'm, I'd really need to start putting a proxy pylon down and if it looks like the fight is going to extend for a while, researching warp gate and moving into warp gate technology. Because what warp gate does is that it allows you to bring your forces right here with no reinforced time so you can get an extra cycle of units to bring to bear on your enemy. Now a uh, common fallacy is that you need more than four warp gates to spend all your money on one base. That isn't true. If I didn't uh, screw up and supply like myself and stop training units, I could have spent all my money with just these four gateways. Because the four gateways plus supply, you will not be able to afford more than that. Especially with a robotics facility to pump uh, some mortals if I needed them as well. I'd be spending well more resources than I had. But even so, uh, the timing of warp switching from warp gate from gateway to warp gate, I don't think that's uh, as obvious post patch as it was before. And uh, making a case for it in games like this, where you could push a little bit earlier than people are expecting, with uh, standard gateway tech. So we'll see. Um, we'll see as I get to play against better opponents, and we'll see <laughs> in terms of how the professional scene adapts to it as well. Until then, thumbs up if you like this one, and I'll see you in the next video. The main team is signing off.